Subsistence farmers in semi-arid Africa struggle to grow enough food to eat in a harsh environment. In this film, we'll explore the obstacles to sustainability and show how farmers can both create the potential for sustainable life and make it happen. If they're to make farming sustainable, farmers need to increase food production, growing enough food to eat and to sell to achieve food security. Of course, they have to do this without damaging the environment, so that the land will support them long term. Excellent development was set up in semi-arid Kenya to spread successful initiatives developed by local farmers. The NGO works with communities to enable them to become sustainable farmers. We'll now explore their challenges and how they overcome the obstacles to make it happen. So what are the main obstacles to sustainable farming? Most importantly, the climate, which can be made harder by the impacts of climate change. Farmers' dependence on the land, exacerbated by population growth, are further obstacles we'll discuss. Surprisingly, the amount of rain in semi-arid areas is quite high. Annual rainfall can be as much as Manchester at 1,200 millimetres, but it falls in only 15 to 20 days of the year, rather than what seems like every day in Manchester. After the long dry season, the earth is as hard as concrete. Consequently, when the rains come, most of the water hits the land and, rather than sinking in, runs off the surface, taking the fertile topsoil with it. The rainwater soon disappears down the riverbeds and into the Indian Ocean, meaning water can be scarce in as little as four weeks. This means that in the dry season, women and children can walk as far as 10 kilometres to get water, taking anything from four to eight hours. In periods of drought, this becomes a walk of up to 20 kilometres, taking as much as 12 hours each day. 30 years back, we used to live a very, very bad life because we used to go long, long, long ways to collect water. We used only to, go, to, to have one, one meal per day because we used to go very early in the morning to fetch water and make lunch only, and go to water in the evening. So how will climate change affect sustainable farming? In 2007, Sir Nicholas Stern investigated the economic effects of climate change, and the resulting report predicts that the poor in developing countries will be hit the hardest by global climate change, and those in semi-arid environments will be hit the most. It's already hard to grow enough food to eat in semi-arid Africa. Climate change will make it even harder. More extreme weather is predicted for this region. Extended dry seasons or droughts would become more common, making water even more scarce and raising soil temperatures, exacerbating the problems of soil erosion and water running off farmland. Famine and starvation could be the result. This is terrible news for farmers in this region. 50% of farmers excellent development work with are subsistence farmers, so they depend entirely on their land to produce the food they eat. Incomes are generated from selling any surplus. There are few other opportunities to earn incomes in rural areas. Whilst the other 50% do have a family member employed in a local town or city sending money home once a month, this is only a supplementary income that's commonly used for basic necessities, such as salt, sugar, soap and paraffin, and, if it stretches that far, secondary school fees. Food production also needs to keep pace with population growth, which increases pressure on the land. Farms become smaller with each generation because they're divided up between children. More land is put into use for farming, and land that was previously allowed to rest is farmed every season risking its fertility. Let's take a look now at how you can create the potential for sustainable farming. The semi-arid climate poses a significant obstacle to feeding a growing population that's dependent on the land. Add climate change and the obstacle becomes even greater. The initial challenge for farmers is to tackle the impacts of the semi-arid climate by finding a way to conserve water through the dry season and reduce soil erosion. 
excellent development supports farmers to conserve soil and water using three interrelated techniques – terracing, sand dams and trees. The first of the three to be tackled is the terracing of land to create flat fields so that water and soil is conserved. The terraces dug along the contour of the land can reduce water running off the land from 45% to only 5%. That's a remarkable increase in the water conserved in the farms. Terracing also reduces soil losses by an amazing 97%. For a farm the size of a football pitch, this means 50 tonnes of soil is kept in the fields. In dry lands, this is hard work. Farmers work together in a self-help group to help each other to terrace their land. It would take one person a full day to dig just 10 metres. Working together, communities dig an average of 10 kilometres of terracing on their farms. That's 25 times around an athletics track. Terracing alone greatly increases the amount of food farmers can produce. Last season, we learned a lot because some few people who had terraces in their chambers in the area, we saw them harvesting. And that is why we're putting a lot of effort in every member's chamber to take terraces, terraces so that we can harvest. And we are sure if we get the same, same rains that we get shell most of the seasons, we shall harvest. If we have terraces in every chamber. So, having increased the amount of soil and water retained in the farms, the second step is to conserve more water in the seasonal riverbeds. This is done with sand dams, ingenious structures with no visible water. A sand dam isn't made of sand, it actually retains sand behind a concrete wall built across a seasonal riverbed during the dry season. The beauty of sand dams is that you're creating springs, you're not utilising springs. So the sand dam will add water to the, to the community and in actual fact what's even more beautiful about them is that they're built from the river itself. So the water's collected, the sand that's collected in the river is used to build the dam, the stones are broken off by the community. So with the little bit of addition of cement and some steel, actually they're creating water for themselves out of the river itself. Dams are built during the dry season and are designed with spillways and wings to keep the river flowing as before. The rains are heavy and fast, so it needs to be strong. The dam captures the water when it rains, going back upstream up to one kilometre. However, there is soil suspended in the water. The sand in the soil sinks and the lighter silt is taken downstream by the overflowing water. The wet sand builds up behind the dam, filling it completely after one to three seasons. So one thing's been puzzling me. When I think of a dam, I think of water. But where is all this water? Thankfully, Joshua is here to answer that question for me. Joshua, I know this is a sand dam, but where on earth's the water? We are standing on water. And this sand, where we are now, we are standing on water. I say it is 60% sand and 40% water. We've just walked for about five minutes over all of this sand that's been collected behind this dam. Now it's estimated that 10 million litres of water is captured beneath this sand. That means that little ones like Milika here have plenty of water nearby and it's clean. The water is then collected traditionally by scooping a hole in the sand. This water is cleaner too because it's protected under the sand from insects and animals. Before excellent we were using uh, 20 kilometers from here to Hathi River. 20, 20 kilometers from here to Hathi River. Uh, once you go to fetch water there, uh, you have to stay, to stay for, uh, for uh, the, whole month, the, the, the whole day or two days before you get water because you find jelly cans are, are, are cured, put in, in a cute for fetching water. Now we can also dig water from, from the sand dam now. The dams provide clean water for people and animals. 
They also enable the water supply and time needed to set up tree nurseries in the dry season. Trees are the third step in the effort to conserve water and soil. The roots hold the soil together and enable more water penetration. The coverage from the leaves reduces soil temperatures and wind erosion, also keeping more water in the soil. Nitrogen fixing trees also fertilize the soil with their roots and leaves. All in all, the result is a strong contribution to the increased crop yields. Wood accounts for 95% of total energy use in rural Kenya, so trees also enable farmers to be self-sufficient in fuel, saving another two hours a day collecting from other areas. There are some of the trees that we plant or to be planted in the chamber, and those, those trees can help us to maintain the moisture in the soil because as the tree grows, the roots are growing, and these, these roots of uh, most of the trees, their roots help to lighten the, the, the soil. The soil breathes, and these trees, when they grow up, they still, uh, the leaves, they fall down. Those leaves, they are still uh, fertilizers, you can use them. The microclimate here has changed a great deal, and it has changed because of the following reasons. First of all, trees have been planted. And uh, normally this area would have acacia and grass. But the community here over the last 25 years have planted lots of trees. What this has meant is that there's more precipitation because uh, uh, of the, the arresting the, cl the clouds. There's more, much more dew now here. And also the birds and uh, the, the insects and the wind are bringing more seed here. So what is happening here is that uh, over the last 25 years, this climatic zone has shifted from fairly semi-arid zone 5 geographically to zone 3. Rain water harvesting and planting trees, if it were to be spread uh, across the board, would uh, achieve a great deal in contributing to the reversal of global warming. So to recap, soil and water conservation is achieved by terraces maintaining water and soil in the farms sand dams providing water for the tree nurseries and the trees retaining more soil and water in the terraces, all of which help to address the climate issues by transforming the environment. OK, just to check that you've been paying attention, here are a few questions for you on what we've seen so far. You might want to take a quick break here while you think about the answers.